Assalamualaikum and good afternoon everyone. Thank you for joining. Waalaikumsalam. Thank you for joining today's webinar entitled The Role of Dynamic Stall in Various Types of Fluid Solid Interaction, Hovering, Propelling and Torque Enhancement of Vertical Axis Turbine by Professor Dr. Engineer Shinosuke Obi from Keio University, Japan. My name is Siti Ujila Masuri. I am from Department of Mechanical and Manufacturing Engineering, Faculty of Engineering, University Putra, Malaysia. I will be your moderator for today's webinar. And if you have any question, uh, feel free to type it in the chat box or you can directly ask Prof. Obi later in the Q&A session. Okay, I would like to first introduce our speaker and let me read his uh, biography. Professor Obi has a Bachelor and Master of Science in Mechanical Engineering from Keio University, Japan and Doctor of Engineering from the University of Erlangen Nuremberg in Germany. He is a professor at the Department of Mechanical Engineering, Faculty of Science and Technology, Keio University, Japan. He is also a fellow of the Japan Society of Mechanical Engineers and the Japan Society of Fluid Mechanics as well as a member of various academic societies, including the Heat Transfer Society of Japan, the Gas Turbine Society of Japan, and the Japan Society of Civil Engineers. Professor Obi's research focuses on fluid mechanics, turbulence modeling, computational mechanics, heat transfer, and flow measurement techniques. He has published numerous articles and reviews in academic journals, edited books, refereed proceedings in Japanese and English, and has delivered over 200 presentations at Japanese conferences and meetings. Additionally, for your information, uh, Prof. Obi is currently our external examiner at the Department of Mechanical and uh, Manufacturing Engineering, University of Putra, Malaysia. Uh, Prof. Obi, we are honored to have you with us today. And without further ado, I would like to invite Prof. Obi to share his knowledge. Prof. Obi, the floor is yours. Okay. Thank you very much for a very kind introduction. It's a pleasure and honor for me to have this opportunity to present my recent work at Keio University uh, in front of my colleagues from the UPM Department of Mechanical and Manufacturing Engineering. Uh, this opportunity has been given to me as an external examiner uh, to which I'm spending my entire week uh, with you. And uh, this morning I interviewed six times four, 24 students of mechanical engineering department. And it seems they all enjoy studying uh, the subject, uh, although uh, rather restricted condition. Uh, caused by COVID-19 pandemic. Um, I have prepared my talk today, uh, summarizing a couple of, uh, pick, uh, uh, picking up some of uh, recent um, research topics, uh, all related to the dynamic stall. So dynamic stall is something uh, uh, that, that, that when it occurs in fluid, di di fluid machinery, for instance, it contaminates its performance and uh, considered to be uh, something bad in the conventional fluid mechanics. But um, there are many, many applications where this dynamic stall plays a very important role. And I'm going to show you a few examples and would like to discuss with you about uh, these uh, applications. Okay. So let me start. Do you see this background slide now? Okay. Yes. Okay. So this uh, dynamic stall is first uh, uh, observed in uh, flapping uh, wings uh, where the insects or birds in relatively small dimensions uh, produce their lift. Also, in, 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 in contrast to the airplane 
or relatively large birds which use fixed airfoil uh, and create the uh, uh, lift force according to say Bill Nui's uh, theorem or, or circulation theory um, flapping, flapping flight uh, is something different because the, the airfoil is moving constantly and produces the stall at all instant of time. And uh, something good for this flapping flight or dynamic stall application is that, uh, as you see, this is typical in a relatively small insect to use this flapping flight mechanism. And um, it is generally believed that uh, mobility and stability of the flight uh, becomes uh, better as the dimension decreases. So for instance, we are looking at uh, uh, this is an un un unmanned uh, mi micro air vehicle. So this is a drone basically. And this drone is quite popular now. But if we think about um, further reducing the dimension of this drone, probably this flapping flight mechanism has better uh, energy efficiency and better maneuverability. So it's probably interesting to study what really actually happens in the flapping flight from fluid mechanics point of view. So as I mentioned before, in the conventional fluid mechanics, the lift force is obtained by fixed airfoil under the steady flow and a relatively low angle of attack to prevent the flow separation. On the other hand, in the flapping wing, uh, it is transitional and unsteady flow, and angle of attack is relatively large, around 40 degrees typically. And it produces a uh, separating vortex, which is uh, illustrated by safety result like this. And um, this uh, separation uh, actually produces a lift in completely different mechanism as a fixed uh, wing case. So if you look at this uh, model of this insect that uh, is in the hovering, hovering condition, uh, because of this uh, continuous uh, go and back motion of this wing, it, and with relatively large angle of attack, there is a leading edge vortex that separates and attached here all the time. And this vortex motion here produces low pressure area because of the rotation, uh, center of the vortex becomes a low pressure area and that produces actually the lift. And this is basically, this is also uh, found in CFD study in recent one, published one. So this uh, picture top shows the, in color, the strength of the vortex here. And because of this strength vortex, there is a large uh, negative pressure region here attached to the wall. And because of this pressure difference on the lower side, upper side, this area actually acts as a lift force to this uh, inclined plate. People may think that uh, if this inclined plate moves in the fluid, there will be a fluid pushing from downside. Therefore, this plate would be expecting a lift force. But this pushing part is here, relatively small, very, uh, actually very small. And uh, it is this separated uh, dynamic vortex that produces a negative pressure on the upper side and that produces a lift actually. And in order to understand the vortex dynamics, we need to think about the vortex transport equation. This can be uh, de derived by taking a curl of uh, Navier-Stokes equation. So omega is the vorticity in the flow field and its time evolution 
is basically governed by two opposing uh, uh, effects. One is stretching term, another is viscosity term. So viscosity term simply uh, diffuses the vorticity in the field be, uh, due to the molecular viscosity, and therefore uh, the strength of the vortex will be always diminished. And on the other hand, this stretching term, this is the, we'll, I, I will show I, some example. This is the uh, very important mechanism to understand the vortex dynamics. And this term only occurs in three dimensional field. So if you introduce two dimensional approximation, this stretching term disappears. And at the same time, you will lose the very important mechanism of this vortex transport equation. So this is the first experiment I'm going to show you. Uh, this is a plate made by uh, acrylic material, and uh, it has uh, this uh, 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 orbital shape. And this will be uh, put in the water and uh, moves around the rotating axis and it put some kind of mimics this hovering condition. So this whole thing is put in a fairly large water tank. And kinetics is that uh, we keep the angle of attack of this plate either 40 or 90 degree and move it at un constant angular velocity and uh, reduce Reynolds number based on this um, uh, length of this uh, uh, plate is in the order of two thousand. So this is nearly just equal to the large moth uh, flying in the air. So there are some parameters and this is how this plate uh, moves in the water. So we have made the flow visual uh, by using a hydrogen bubble, which is uh, generated by uh, putting a direct currency between the platinum wire put around this uh, uh, plate and another terminal somewhere inside the inside the tank. And when we apply the uh, electronic uh, uh, current, then it produces the hydrogen bubble as a result of this. Um, chemical reaction. So this is moved in the water so that it produces some pattern behind this uh, plate. If you look carefully, uh, this part here, this very uh, thin part of this uh, group of the uh, uh, these bubbles is the, something that visualizes the vortex uh, made behind this plate. So as the plate travels in the water, vortex ring is formulated like this. And that as it pro proceeds, one part of the vortex ring is attached here and another part is flown into the field. And uh, this size of the vortex ring will will be larger and larger. So if you are looking at one part of the vortex ring here, so as the ring becomes longer and uh, longer and longer, and in order to uh, 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 you know, ma maintain the angular momentum, uh, this uh, ring becomes longer and the cross section of this ring, which represents a vortex, becomes thinner and uh, it experiences a stretch and therefore it um, uh, uh, actually uh, increases the vorticity uh, along this axis here. So uh, to make it a bit more uh, 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 quanti quantitatively, uh, we introduce this particle image velocity measurement. Uh, we pick up the same configuration and uh, define this coordinate like this and uh, make a measurement for 
like 20 to 25 times of this run and made an ensemble average to make this uh, vortex system visible. Okay, so this is what we are going to look look at. So we, you remember this uh, vortex ring behind this uh, uh, shape, and we simply cut uh, the one cross section of this uh, uh, vortex ring, and so that this part will be seen as a red color here, and this part will be seen with blue color here. So blue and red because the, uh, the sign of the vorticity is opposite on here and here, and um, you will see what will happen. So this is the case of the angle of attack for 90 degrees. If we move this plate from initial position to like 15 degrees, you see that the pair of vortex evolves from top and bottom side of this uh, plate. And as it proceeds, the uh, vortex is detached from the plate and moved further downstream. And at the same time, the strength of vortex is decayed. And this eventually mixed with the uh, ambient fluid. However, if we do this with different angle of attack, in this case, 40 degrees as opposed to 90 degrees here, you see here, this uh, lower side of vortex ring is moved downstream. Uh, by this, the vortex ring is stretched, and this part here is somehow uh, strengthened. As it travels farther, this part of the vortex moves away from the plate and on the, se on, on the other si side, this part here attached to the plate and continues to be there. So this is something we have found uh, in the recent experiment of relatively simple uh, case. And uh, we are looking at uh, the dynamics of a vortex here. So as it proceeds, the location of the vortex does not change too much, which means by uh, uh, b because of this um, you know, vortex uh, continued to stay here, this produces a negative pressure and therefore it produces a lift uh, on this plate. So this is the, the evidence that uh, the incline plate produces a uh, 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 lift force due to this uh, separated uh, vortex dynamic stall. This is one example. Another example is um, vertical axis wind turbine. So you may be familiar with this type of wind turbines, either on top of the water or on, on, on some other, other, other facilities, floating uh, stations. This is quite uh, a popular type of this uh, uh, wind turbine. And this wind turbine is categorized as horizontal axis wind turbine because the axis of rotation is horizontal. In, in contrast to this, uh, we have a vertical axis wind turbines. So you see the clear difference that the rotating axis of this turbine is vertical and uh, it does not actually uh, oppose to the direction of the wind. Uh, as uh, in, in this horizontal uh, turbine case, you always need to put the direction of the axis towards the windward direction to maximize the performance of this wind turbine. But this horizontal turbine, uh, this rotating part experiences a large change of the angle of attack uh, against oncoming flow so that the dynamics uh, of this turbine is very different from the conventional 
horizontal axis type of green turbine. And um, one of my students uh, is very strongly interested in this facility and produces, produced his own equipment, which is shown now by a movie. Uh, this is a um, wind uh, channel in our laboratory. And uh, here uh, the movie shows that this um, uh, pair, pair of uh, vertical axis turbine is actually rotating in the floating water. And his uh, uh, interest was to maximize the energy efficiency by using this pair of um, vertical uh, axis uh, turbine and change by, by changing the distance between two axes or changing this uh, uh, phase of rotation and direction of rotation and others. And he just finished a PhD. So this is um, one uh, kind of uh, experimental setup that we conducted. Uh, this is a wind turbine set, uh, not, sorry, water turbine in this case uh, setup. And water flow is coming from left down to the right. And we eliminated one plane of the water uh, channel by laser light. So this laser light is made like a sheet uh, so that it eliminates only one selected cross section of the flow. And we took the movie from the bottom of this water channel by high speed camera and so that we could picture this uh, floating uh, small particles which has a relatively uh, re relative uh, 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 gravity uh, very close to unity <coughs> so that it follows the motion of the water. So by using this setup, we could uh, make the flow structure behind this uh, uh, rotating uh, turbines uh, visible. So color shows the magnitude of the velocity vector behind this uh, rotating turbine system. You see that this, uh, as the blade pass by, there is a huge uh, vortex motion like this uh, uh, emitted into the wake of this flow. And uh, it shows very strong unsteady in nature as compared to the horizontal axis the turbine. And uh, my student made a CFT study for this flow field and uh, produces the picture like this for different configuration and different uh, moment of the rotation. So anyway, we are able to produce both uh, uh, experiment and uh, also by computation, very similar uh, uh, flow field so that it makes us possible to analyze the CFD results more in detail uh, to reflect that result back into the experiment. Okay, so this is one uh, typical example of the such information that can be obtained only by the computation. It is very hard to obtain this kind of uh, uh, curve which represents the torque uh, acting on one blade uh, within one rotation. So it shows a very strong unsteadiness. It produces large torque at some angle and uh, it produces in some angle negative uh, torque. So by combining this in three phases, we could produce a meaningful torque by this uh, vertical axis. And the different curves are comparing the different condition of block blockage. Uh, by CFD, we can change the flow passage quite arbitrary so that um, a relatively a large blockage here uh, corresponds to the narrow passage and beta equal 19%. This is relatively 
large passage. So if you narrow the passage, uh, the blockage ratio becomes larger, and we see this um, uh, increase of the maximum torque produced by this um, uh, 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 rotating uh, uh, airfoil. And uh, people say different things, why this happens. Uh, someone says uh, because of the accelerated flow, it is natural to see that this uh, is in increased. But if we look more closely here, this increase is visible as this uh, increase of this maximum value, but it also extends the um, azimuthal angle range of positive uh, 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 torque uh, with increasing uh, blockage ratio. So we wanted to have the answer to this uh, thing. So this is how the flow changes as uh, 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 this turbine rotates. It starts from here to there, then here, then there, then there, and there. So among here to here, we see the positive torque, strong uh, torque generation. And from here down to here, the, this uh, airfoil does not produce any torque. So therefore, uh, our task is to observe what is really going on between here and there, okay? So we have picked up one particular angle and compared here with uh, a different uh, blockage ratio. So this is higher blockage ratio, and this is lower blockage ratio. So you see, as the blockage ratio increases, there is a strong negative pressure region that grows with the increasing uh, 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 blockage ratio. And if you further go uh, further, uh, uh, further down, we see this here is actually associated with the dynamic stall here. So dynamic stall is become more uh, visible with increasing uh, uh, blockage ratio. So no one has ever uh, talked about this um, uh, role of the separated dynamic stall that produces a large negative part here and that pulls this uh, airfoil to produce a larger uh, 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 torque here. So actually, this uh, dynamic stall has been considered to be something troublesome in this kind of vertical axis wind turbine or, or water turbine, but we have found that uh, this uh, dynamic stall can uh, produce larger uh, torque when we uh, actually use it in a proper way. Okay, so this is something uh, that we found in the, this turbine study. So this produces the larger torque. Okay, quite a different topic now. Uh, we have done also different experiment in the same uh, uh, context. Uh, this is a propulsion of the caudal fin in underwater. So you know the fish produces the, the thrust by you know moving its tail uh, right and left. And people usually talk about that this fish produces the vortex rings behind it. And uh, if we look at this vortex thing from the top, it looks like that, like this. So if you know something about fluid mechanics, you must have studied about the uh, common vortex behind the black body. Um, you can imagine that the reversed common vortex. In the common vortex case, you have a wake and the uh, time average velocity in the center is lower than the ambient. But in this case, because of the this motion of the vortex ring, like this, what that?
there is a pushed fluid here. Water is pushed downwards by this motion of the vortex, so that it produces a thrust to the fish. So, the fish um, does not uh, understand the fluid mechanics, but uh, they know how to use maximum of this uh, vortex. And uh, we only do not know, we human know the fluid mechanics, but uh, what we do not know what determines the optimum condition to produce the best energy efficient uh, motion of this uh, tail. So, we made this model, moving uh, flapping uh, plate, but this time this plate is elastic, so that it deforms, it changes its form uh, as a consequence of the interaction between fluid and this uh, force. And when it is uh, turned like this, the vortex is formed, and this vortex in turn produces the thrust. So, we'd like to see the shape or the motion of the caudal fin and propulsion performance and flow structure. So this, then we have designed some unique uh, experimental setup. So this student was looking at some fluid dynamics uh, 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 conditions and um, but may, maybe I, I, I skip here and I show you later. And um, the best energy performance may be achieved if the vibration uh, occurs in resonant condition, right? So uh, you have the maximum uh, vibration uh, amplitude with the minimum input when this uh, elastic uh, plate vibrates at its natural frequency, uh, which is resonant. So therefore, uh, people usually talk about that the best energy efficiency or best thrust could be achieved at the highest uh, amplitude of this uh, 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 motion, and so that uh, we do the investigation near the resonant frequency. Okay, so therefore, our purpose is to investigate influence of the elastic modulus and forcing amplitude on the frequency dependency of the self propelling speed. So we believe that the resonance produces the best performance. Okay. So we designed not really fish, but only the tail fin. So tail fin model, I will just uh, explain later a bit more in detail. Uh, whole setup here is put in the same water tank as I explained before. And this whole thing is moved up and down by this mechanism, actuator mechanism. So by rotating this motor, this whole thing moves up and down. And therefore this part here looks like uh, uh, swimming in the in the uh, in the water so we call it merry go round mechanism so this thing is put under the water and the whole part of this is uh, vibrated at the known given a frequency and given amplitude ar okay and uh, this part is only rotating and up here is uh, not rotating, okay? Only this part is rotating. And we put fin in three uh, equally spaced uh, rod and in order to maintain the dynamic stability. So if we put only one fin here and vibrate up and down, then it will be twisted and does not rotate. And after a few try and errors, we found this three uh, fin system uh, produces the best uh, uh, mechanical stability, J just like a, a wind turbine case, you know. And this here is a little bit of a complicated thrust bearing. And if we rotate the whole thing, it moves like this. 
So you can see that this um, fin actually deforms because of this um, uh, uh, vibration. And because, because of this deformation, the whole thing will swim by itself at constant rotating velocity. And we measure this rotating velocity and as a as a propelling speed, and uh, and uh, uh, compare it for different uh, uh, frequency and different shape of the fin. So here is shown the model four, which has this shape, and you see here this thing. Okay, so this student picked up nine different uh, shapes and compared all these. Uh, like a matrix. Uh, this type is maybe similar to salmon fish, and this part here may be close to the shape of the Pacific. Sorry. So, uh, this student wanted to see the influence of the shape uh, besides the influence of the frequency, a little bit ambitious, but he did a lot of experiments like this. So, <coughs> He did roughly two different experiments. The experiment number one is measurement of vibration characteristic, characteristic only, where this self propel motion is not performed. So this rotating uh, merry-go-round is uh, put on a stopper so that it moved only go uh, up and down, and uh, the other thing is not noted. And experiment two is self propelling rotating experiment that I I showed before. So, the first part of the experiment, uh, he changed different uh, geometrical parameters, and but eventually came up to the conclusion that these three cases, one, four, and seven, they represent the best uh, difference in terms of the shape, and also shows the most understandable uh, frequency characteristics. So we changed the forcing frequency between 1 hertz to 10 hertz and observed the change of the shape of this fin looking from the side of the uh, window. So we moved this thing uh, uh, up and down along this z axis, so perpendicular to this. Uh, 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 screen here, okay, and we took the picture from side by high speed camera. So it looked like this on the right uh, on this movie. So we fixed this uh, amplitude of the root part at uh, 3 millimeter, and in this particular movie, you are looking at the uh, motion of the model 4. Uh, forced at frequency of 4 hertz. And there are some conditions to measure. And of course, uh, this shape is a little bit uh, irregular, so that we have uh, mm, uh, uh, approximated by Euler Bernoulli's beam bending vibration expression. But anyway, we made a uh, measurement of this uh, tip amplitude for different shape and different uh, frequency. So, as I said, model 1, 4, and 7 uh, are tested for wide range of forcing frequency. And in each case, we found some resonance frequency, and this resonance frequency changed for different uh, shape. So here we see the effect of the shape. As this uh, tip becomes thinner, uh, the resonance frequency becomes higher. So, which means we expect that this thin shape would have the best performance at higher frequency than this or that. Okay? So, this is now again the explanation of rotating uh, experiment. So we measure uh, this rotation by laser displacement meter, and we count three pulses to calculate one 
rotation uh, of this whole system. And uh, because from this uh, rotation period, we could calculate the, the propelling speed. So this is the result for case one, four, and seven. Looking at model one, it had this um, uh, resonance frequency to be 1.5 hertz, but we had the best performance in propelling speed a little bit higher here. For model four, this was the highest highest amplitude frequency, but higher velocity is achieved up here. So, in any case, we see that the natural frequency and the frequency at which we have maximum value of uh, propelling velocity is different. And uh, we are puzzled somehow. There is still some discussion, but uh, we are not really confident with this result, and uh, we stop the experiment there. And now we are doing some CFD computation recently by a student who is now in Yama. This is a sequence of this uh, model one plate moving in the water. And you see this green or red part uh, just like a vortex uh, structure that you saw in the in this hydrogen bubble uh, movie uh, before. So this produces a vortex around this uh, plate, and this uh, vortex uh, actually produces this uh, uh, thrust. This is fine. And uh, for the model four, if we have the tick here, it shows only the half. Uh, calculated only the half in, uh, because of the symmetricity, uh, it shows a fairly different uh, vortex system as compared to one here. So this is rather simple. And here you see more uh, vortex system in between here. If we look at model seven, uh, it shows uh, much more complex. Uh, by the way, these are one, four, and seven uh, 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 operated at the frequency where we had the best, uh, uh, la largest uh, uh, amplitude of the resonance. So, at each case, we have different vortex systems, and therefore, uh, this change of the shape uh, produces much more uh, effect than uh, just a shape of the vortex, okay? So I have, and this is a comparison between experiment and the uh, CFD. So these uh, experiment uh, measure the thrust against the frequency. And uh, we saw this model one, four, and seven, uh, something like this. So this F star, uh, equal to unity means this is the resonance frequency and we have the faster velocity at the higher uh, frequency than resonance frequency, just like this and that. And for the computation, uh, fortunately, we had very similar result. Uh, we had the faster uh, flow generated by the flapping uh, plate than the resonance frequency here. So. Now, we are optimistic with this result and uh, uh, doing some further uh, analysis from CFD, which were not possible by the experiment. So, in summary, <clears throat> I show you three examples of um, dynamic stall that can be found uh, as a very important key factor. And uh, you can imagine there are many other applications where this kind of dynamic stall play a significant role. This behavior of dynamic stall is not well explained in conventional fluid dynamics because this is three dimensional, because this is unsteady, therefore it is very difficult to simplify as a, just like a 2D 
case. And the important thing is that this uh, dynamic stall is uh, nothing but the concentrated vortex motion, and it produces low pressure region in the center. And it produces, in some cases, strong lift or strong torque, or in some cases, thrust. And key vortex dynamics is stretching. And this stretching occurs only in 3D and cannot be expressed by 2D approximation. And therefore, it makes analysis a bit more difficult. And in any event, combination of experiment and simulation is very helpful to understand this complex uh, uh, phenomena. And um, as I showed you only a few examples of this phenomena, and um, there are still many theories uh, among different researchers. And uh, we are trying to understand all this event by uh, clear explanation from fluid mechanics point of view and not just by empirical uh, explanation by fish or bird. So this is all from me. Uh, thank you very much for your attention and I'm happy to answer or any question or discuss on this topic. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much, Prof. Obi, for your sharing of knowledge. Um, it's very interesting to see your experimental and numerical studies that were inspired by the fish movement, uh, in particular the, the tail fin, um, which is used for self-propelling mechanism. Okay, before we go to Q&A session, I would like to inform uh, all participants that you will receive a certificate for your attendance today. And for that purpose, uh, please fill in the attendance form through the link that is posted in the chest, chat box. Okay. And now the floor is open for Q&A. If you have any questions that you would like to ask Prof. Obi, please unmute yourself and ask the questions. Or you can type it in the chat box and um, okay, we have the first question from Insead Islam. Uh, you want to unmute yourself and ask? Yeah, uh, good evening, everyone. Thank you, Dr. Prof, uh, for your wonderful uh, in, uh, sharing your wonderful information. I have a little theory on torque curve. Car 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 the torque car curve you shared. Bro. Yes, yes. Yeah, they are um, at the curve, the uh, beta for 50%. 50% 50, 50 had reduced after the uh, azim uh, azimuthal angle 180. After that, it reduced and lowest. And before that, at 90, it, it was iced. So the uh, reason for this phenomena is... Um, you are talking about this uh, vertical axis wind turbine? Yeah, the uh, second one uh, about the torque curve. Okay, okay. The torque curve. Yeah. Is um, this here? This one. Ah, sorry, I need to share. You mean this? Yeah, yeah, I hear. Okay. So zero degree is like uh, 12 o'clock. And 90 is nine o'clock, 180 is like six o'clock. It's in the counter clockwise rotation. Yeah, okay. Here, actually, uh, my question was at 90, uh, before, mm -hmm. uh, till 90, actually, it's, uh, the beta has increased. It's yes. Increased. But after that, it's uh, reduced and it's the lowest, lowest after 180, angle 180. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so what's the phenomena for that? Uh, simply because this, um, as the blade rotates, angle of attack to the floor varies 
very substantially so that uh, at some angle it does not produce any lift or well, anything you know just like this okay okay bro thank you mm. okay thank you okay thank you thank you for the question Thank you, Prof. Um, there's also a question in the chat box. Okay. When the critical angle of attack is exceeded, angle of attack, do you think this then we can effectively force? Nonlinear answer the aerodynamic effect. Uh, what? what? What 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 do you mean exactly? Uh, Doctor Ellis, the question. Okay. Uh, I mean, uh, the, the there is no zero leaf force or irrotational or irrotational. Of vorticity, the uh, this, this is this, this is rotational actually. Oh, it's okay. This is so fully then, the, the the viscosity is fully uh, uh, taken into account. Okay, yeah. So uh, this will affect the 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 lift you want to the lift force and what the the relationship uh, in the, even of, of top. If you if uh, you compare to the horizontal axis one turbine. We need a tip speed ratio okay. for this one, yeah, mm -hmm. in order to get a performance uh, coefficient see, uh, close to bird's Thank limits. You. To Thank you for lift. okay. Thank you for question. Yeah. This tip speed ratio is maximum uh, close to one. It's relatively oh, slow. Yes, relatively slow. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, thank you for asking. I, I should have mentioned that before. Thank you. Okay, we have Dr. Aziz. You would like to ask a question? Go ahead. Yes. Oh, hello. Hello, Prof. Hello. Oh, yes, sorry, yeah. I, I have trouble in unmuting the, uh, <laughs> the Google Meet. Okay. It happens, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, uh, I'm Aziz from the same department, basically, uh, which has, you know, uh, has the expertise in the field of uh, combustion. And sometimes I did the CFD study as well. I see. And then, you know, uh, from the, you know, from the presentations, we can see a lot of uh, CFD studies from, from uh, your students, okay? especially mm -hmm. in the study of curl and vortex and then if we look into this uh, part okay curl and vortex study or rotational study okay turbulent model has a major impact mm -hmm. in order to predict the flow field yes okay so from all these studies uh, especially you know uh, from the horizontal and vertical adjustment turbine so i would like to know what is the most accurate uh, turbulent models used in this uh, type of simulations uh -huh. And also, does the same model use, okay, in different simulation, uh, like uh, a fish, uh, you know, a simulation that you saw uh, just, just now? Okay, and thank that's you. That's my question, yep. Thank you, it's very important. Um, actually, for the fish thing, that was uh, no turbulence. That was uh, sort of the, just the uh, Navier-Stokes equation as it is. So are we, are we solving the full Navier-Stokes equation or a simple yes. Navier-Stokes? Full Navier-Stokes equation, 3D. Oh, a full Navier-Stokes equation, oh, okay. Yes. And coupled with the uh, deforming modulus. Mm -hmm. And uh, for this uh, turbine simulation, I think it, he was using a spallat almaras model. So you mean that uh, the spotlight admiral models uh, is the most accurate for the external flow? I wouldn't say most accurate. Uh, it produces a reasonable result at the most uh, reasonable computational cost. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. Uh, okay, sure. <laughs> right. Yes, and uh, you know because it, it produces quite okay for the onset of the separation. And if we want to further analyze the decay in the wake or interaction mm. of vortex with uh, the blade in the wake part, it is rather hard. But uh, in order to see this dynamic stall up to up to separation, mm. as part our mass is okay. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So have have they tried to use uh, the LES? Uh, what the difference between the small and Uh Yes, we are doing LES too, and uh, for the LES, we uh, actually this. <coughs> sorry, this simulation I'm showing here is two D, two dimensional. Mm -hmm. For LES, we cannot do 2D and we're doing 3D. Uh, therefore, uh, the results are pretty much different. Oh, okay, in, I see. In terms of the vortex stretching, that is only captured by 3D. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, understood. Okay, thank you, Prof. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you, Prof and Dr. Aziz. Is there any other questions from the participants? I see a lot of um, students, our undergraduate students. So maybe one or two of you can ask questions to Prof. Obi. If not, you can write me an email. Uh, I, I think my address is easily accessible by internet just search my name and you find my name um okay prof i have a question yes for the model of tail fin that you have um you have done the experimental and numerical work mm -hmm. um is there a way that you can control the speed itself uh, maybe because we can use that idea for other applications that require the speed to be able to control. You mean this experiment? Yes, that's right. Okay. Um, of course, we can control the speed if we put this um, if we put this uh, uh, kind of break in the axis which we do for the turbine uh, experiment. But uh, co as compared to the turbine, this um, merry-go-round self-propelling uh, fish-like fin, uh, the, the torque is much, much weaker as compared to this um, uh, uh, turbine case. So I don't think we do that kind of experiment in the future. Thank you, Prof. Okay, so is there any other question? Maybe last one? Okay, uh, if there is no more question, um, we can proceed to the picture taking session. So I would like to ask everyone to turn on your camera and Dr. Iza will take picture of us. Dr. Iza, are you ready? Yes. Okay. So, so everyone can switch on camera. Yep. We waiting. Okay. Are we ready? One. Okay. okay. One, two, three. Okay, once again, one, two, three, smile. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you, Dr. Iza. Good. On behalf of the organizing committee, we would like to thank Prof. Obi for your sharing of knowledge with us today. And also for... Um, and thank you to all participants for joining us. 
and hope to have you again um, in next webinar. Okay, so we are at the end of the session. Um, thank you very much, everyone. Thank you very much again for the kind coordination, the kind invitation. Hope to see thank you, you soon. Thank you, Hope see you soon in see you tomorrow. I'll see you tomorrow anyway. Thank you, Paul. Thank, thank you, Paul. Thank, 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 thank you. Bye bye. Right. Thank, Thank you, everyone. Have a nice day. Stay safe. Thank you, bro. Thank you, Odila. Thank you, Rekum. Thank you, Rekum. Thank you, Rekum. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>